the sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops. And it's gonna be a beautiful day, that's plain to see. Welcome to Bill Dance Outdoors, America's most popular and longest running TV fishing show. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today. You know, I consider myself very, very fortunate because I had a granddaddy who loved to fish. More than me? I doubt it. <laughs> this fine gentleman introduced me at an early age to this great sport in the creeks of Middle Tennessee. While he was teaching me how to read moving water, how and where fish position themselves in relationship to the current and the effectiveness of certain lures and presentations, he was always careful to point out the importance of sight in clear water situations and the importance of sound or vibrations in murky to muddy water situations. Consequently, I personally never gave much thought to the fact that fish do indeed have nostrils and the power to use them. You know, it seems that this is true with many of today's fishermen. And realizing this, I'd like to devote today's show to the subject of smell and just how important it is to fishermen. Fish like bass spend their lives in a shadowy and mysterious watery world in which they cannot depend on sight alone. To monitor their surroundings, they must rely on the skillful use of all five senses because humans also possess the sense of sight, smell, hearing, taste, and touch. We tend to assume that fish perceive and respond just as we do. You know, fishermen are often guilty of what biologists and ichthyologists call anthropomorphic thinking. Now, that's a mighty big word, and it may seem a little intimidating, but it has a simple translation. It means attributing human characteristics to animals. It's a known fact that for survival, both fish and man, they need food, they need cover, and they need protection from their enemies. But the ways of life and habitats of fish differ greatly from those of man. That's why you can't always figure out what you would do in a given situation if you were a fish and then expect the fish to exhibit the same anticipated response. Okay, now let's get back to fishing. Let's get back to fishing. It's easier to understand fish if you learn how they're motivated. The sense of smell is a prime example if we should fall victim to anthropomorphic thinking, it would be easy to discount the importance of smell because our own sense of smell is essential to a fish's survival. There he is. Whoa, to the races. Okay, come over and tell me what's going on in your world, huh? Tell me what's going on, and I'll tell you what's been happening. Easy. You've been doing okay, huh? I'm sorry I fooled you with that, but you just couldn't pass it up, could you, huh? In light of all the available scientific data, it's really surprising to me just how many fishermen still don't believe in the term odor concept. This idea maintains that all fish have an olfactory system, which is a sense of smell, and that's responsive to both positive and negative odors dissolved in the water. Positive odors attract a fish to the source of that odor, while negative odors repel. Research has shown that many kinds of fish can even distinguish between species of aquatic plants, insect larvae, and other kinds of fish, and individuals within a fish school. Bill Dance Outdoors, sponsored by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. 
Rebel, catch fish anywhere. And by Mercury Marine, go boldly. Today's Conditions Log is sponsored by Outdoor Water Solutions, offering pond and lake aeration systems with energy-saving solutions, including solar and wind, customized to fit your need. Visit OutdoorWaterSolutions.com for quality aeration products. Big old fat one right there. There we go. Not a fat, pretty one. Yes, sir. What are you thinking? You thinking what I'm thinking? That I'll let you go? That's what I'm gonna do. See you, buddy. Boy, I tell you what, that didn't put up a fight. Did he ever? Spray down wind. That stuff stays on there pretty good. Okay, tell you what let's do. Let's spend a minute and look at a few illustrations showing the relationship of the Bass's olfactory system to the rest of its brain. Now, the most obvious indication of this system can be seen in the pair of nostrils located on either side of the head of the snout between the upper lip and the eye. The nostril closest to the upper lip is called the anterior nostril, while the one nearest the eye is known as the posterior nostril. Water continuously enters into the anterior nostril and passes into the underlying olfactory chamber and exits through the posterior nostril. The olfactory chamber lies beneath the nostril and cannot be seen with the naked eye. This chamber is a closed sac-like structure and contains the olfactory organ. Thus, water-containing odor molecules is continuously flowing across the olfactory organ, which contains millions of microscopic receptor cells. These receptor cells fire small bioelectrical impulses through the olfactory nerve to the brain, where various odors are recognized, interpreted, then accepted or rejected. Undoubtedly, there are specific odors that arouse hunger and entice feeding behavior in an otherwise inactive fish. Uh-oh, I got one, got one. Watch this. I hear you, I hear you down there. See you going around, acting like a, one of the big boys. You wanna come up here and talk to me? You gonna jump and throw it? He's just gonna look look around, think about it a minute? Well, I guess not. Come up here and tell me how your day's been going. Hmm? Mine's been going good. I've caught a bunch of your buddies. Yep. How's yours been going? You doing okay? I see you've been eating well. Got good coloration. Looking fine. Eyes look good. Yep, fine. Let you go. Today's show is brought to you in part by Quantum Rods and Reels. Quantum Performance Tuned. Mystic Lubricants. 
lubrication domination. And tracker boats, fish the finest. Today's equipment log is brought to you by Ego Fishing and their all new S2 slider landing nets with the most advanced handle extension technology. Take the battle to the water with Ego. Today's show is sponsored in part by Berkeley, catch more fish. Bill Dance exclusive rods by Quantum. And by Garmin, bite your fish, not your fish finder. Right out there, people. Under the trove north. In the trove north. Look at this mess. Go around this way, and back around this way, and there we go. Let the trolling motor down. And we got you. You thought she was cute, didn't you? Wow, that's a little bit of weight there. I saw him come up and get it. Where is the hook? There we go. You haven't been eating with your long and slanky. It's your, see ya. Did a good dive, went in the head first, then give it an old splat. Oh, that's strong breath. <gasps> Speaking of odors that arouse hunger and feeding behavior in inactive fish a minute ago, let me try to put this in perspective by comparing this response to driving past a, a Wendy's, a, a McDonald's, a, a Burger King's with absolutely no thought of hunger in mind. But let that super hamburger aroma filter through my window of my truck. And immediately, I want to make a U-turn to the drive-in window and order a couple of bacon burgers with cheese. Most game fish have an effective nervous system, sharp vision, excellent hearing, a sensitive lateral line system, an incredible sense of smell and taste that enables them to feed under a wide variety of environmental conditions. Of course, some species are weaker in some senses than others. For example, bass see better than walleye during daylight hours, but overall, in feeding behavior, all their senses are brought into play almost immediately. This visual information regarding the type of prey and its size are fired to the brain where it's increased with information coming in from the lateral line and sense of hearing to pinpoint both the speed and the position of the prey. This is coupled with the information sent to the fish's brain by its keen sense of smell. Then the strike is made and the prey is engulfed into the mouth. If the prey tastes okay, it's swallowed. If not, it's promptly spit out. Thus vision, hearing, lateral line sense, and the taste are all involved. There he is. Come up here and let's talk about it. He caught you on the swing by. Well, got my pretty little thing. Here we go. Now, I know that some fishermen might argue with this by saying that a bass, for instance, will strike an artificial lure 
that it has neither taste nor smell. However, if that lure had no hooks and was taken into the mouth of a feeding bass, that bass would instantly realize that the odorless, tasteless object was not a food item and would quickly dislodge it. The Bill Dance Question and Answer of the Week is brought to you by Bill Dance Exclusive Rods by Quantum. Whether you're fishing for panfish, bass, catfish, or light salt water, we have an action for you. Available at Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. I've heard about Berkeley crappie nipples for years, but never really used them until last week. Do they work? You better believe they do. I was amazed. The bite was slow until my fishing buddy said, watch this. He put a power bait chromoglow nipple on and caught four in a row. What? Pass the plate. I was sold. These things are great. Try them. You'll be amazed too. Today's show is sponsored in part by Berkeley, catch more fish. Bill Dance exclusive rods by Quantum. And by Garmin, bite your fish, not your fish finder. Today's product tip is brought to you by Garmin and their GPS map series, chart plotter sonar combos with their advanced sonar technology like Panoptic's Live Scope All Seeing Sonar. You'll spend less time finding your fish. Hey, I got a great product I want to show and tell you about. It's one of Ego's Cryptek Genesis Landing Net series. This S1 model is truly unique and attractive with a removable handle for easy storage and interchangeable accessories for several different size removable handles and net styles and sizes. And you know something? It floats. Come be part of Bill Dance Digital. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Follow us. Oh, Nelly. Oh, look at that big one. Big old bass. Where's the line going? All around you. Look at this one. Look at that, Diane. Look what your husband just caught. <laughs> Big old pretty fish. Woo! Yep. It's a dandy. You a dandy dandy. Okay. Turn you loose, buddy. I believe in this stuff. Speaking about the odor concept, you know, while both smell and taste are distant senses among land animals, both are key senses, but in my opinion, smell is more important. Why? Well, for one thing, smell is always associated with the fish's nostril, while taste is normally associated with taste buds around the mouth area. The smell and taste nerves go to different parts of the brain, which means that smell is more long range and distant sense, while taste is a contact sense. Example. A fish may be drawn from several yards away by a particular smell of a food item. However, it doesn't taste it until it's in its mouth. And by then, well, it's normally too late. Ooh, look right here. I drifted right up on that. 
Let's see if one's right on that point. Another crazy one. Big old long slinky one in it. <laughs> Toodaloo. See you around. Let me tell you a little bit about this golf product we've been using. Gulp Alive is a water-based formula. Once your base hits the water, it begins releasing its scent formula. All base attractants with resins cannot release scents without water-based formulas. Oil and water don't mix. When this Gulp Alive formula passes a test in the lab, it's then sent out in the field to be tested and validated on wild fish to help catch more fish. And it does. Ooh, what a great day. What a great story, and what a great little bait. Oh. Mm, mm, mm. You know, there's plenty of accredited evidence which establishes the sense of smell is incredibly involved in a fish's life. So it should be obvious that you can improve your catches by adding a fish attractor to your lure, especially when the fish are inactive. Give it a try and see if you don't agree. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Bill Dance Outdoors. Join us here again next week. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today.